Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Yeah. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a clip where somebody got fat shamed at the grocery store for buying a banana? What? We're also going to be taking a look at a bonus clip where we learn how to call ourselves fat and not feel bad about it. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. A conversation I had while getting groceries. A super real conversation that I really had. Ooh, bananas. Did you know that a banana has more sugar than a Starbucks drink? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I know I pause these a lot, but I like the part where in the beginning she was looking at it, she's like, ooh, banana. <laughs> I just want to call that out first. Ooh, bananas. If I saw somebody in the store talking to a bunch of bananas, I don't know if I would go up and tell them about the sugar content of said bananas. I might just slowly back away. <laughs> Those are good bananas. Yes, they are. They are very good indeed. Oh, they're talking to you. <laughs> bananas. Did you know that a banana has more sugar than a Starbucks drink? What? Dude, who said that? This never happened. Who the heck would go discourage somebody from buying fruit? Especially if it was somebody that that person thought was obese, or whatever the case may be. I mean, there are a lot of Starbucks drinks, so you're gonna have to be more specific than that. It has more sugar than a nitro cold brew, that's for sure. I doubt it has more sugar than anything else. And unlike the drinks that are very sweet, the banana has fiber that accompanies the sugar, causing it to burn more slowly in the blood, causing a much more gradual rise and decrease in blood sugar levels. I've talked about this before, but I'll go over it briefly again. If you eat a piece of fruit, there is fiber in the fruit that accompanies the sugar, which causes a more gradual rise and then a more gradual decrease in blood sugar levels. If you were to blend up that fruit, now you have removed it from the fiber and you basically have a soda. You're going to get a blood sugar spike and crash in a very similar fashion. All it is, is pure sugar. You might as- And banana-y goodness, it's not pure sugar. Dude, out of all the fruit to take the piss out of, we're going after bananas? I would go after pineapple. That's so sweet. Personally, I do not cut fruit out of my diet. I eat fruits and vegetables. I think you have to be cutting in a very serious way to be taking the sugar content of fruit into account. I don't know if I know anybody that needs to be concerning themselves with the sugar content of fruit is what I'm saying. May as well be eating a candy bar. Oh dude, this is terrible advice. May as well be eating a candy bar. Is this the conversation that somebody had with you or the conversation that you had with yourself inside of your head to justify buying a candy bar? I mean, there's a lot of other nutrients than just sugar that's in a banana. No, the only nutrient that's in it is sugar. I like how you categorized sugar as a nutrient. No, the sugar just cancels it out. You should not be getting those. There's sugar in every fruit, um, but there's also vitamins and stuff. Yeah, I don't demonize food or place moral value on foods. I don't demonize bananas, um, that's for darn sure. I demonize other food like donuts and stuff, but a banana? Um, no, I think we're being a little ridiculous now. If you find yourself avoiding bananas, you might be going down an obsessive path. You might want to reel it in just a little bit, depending on what your fitness goals are. Like I said, some people are cutting or have very specific, very intense fitness goals. Perhaps they could avoid a banana for their very specific reasons, but the rest of us, I don't think so. I actually like bananas. <laughs> Nobody else in my family really likes bananas, but I do, and I always buy them to hell with you guys. So I'm going to get my groceries and you can get yours. They didn't care about the five pints of Ben and Jerry's in your car, just the banana. Just a joke. That's just a little joke. Just a little fun joke between you and me. Just between pals, okay? Well, I have diabetes and... <laughs> That's your credentials? Well, I have diabetes, okay? So I know a thing or two about blood sugar. That is hilarious. A diabetic comes up and starts giving you dietary guidelines based on their diabetes. Like, well, I have diabetes. So you can't have a banana. <laughs> Get away from me. What does your diabetes got to do with my banana? Get the hell out of here. I love this filter, by the way. That beard is like working so well. My doctor said... It's like, I don't know, it sticks to your face so perfectly, is what I'm saying. I don't mean it works well like you should have a beard. I mean like the way that it sticks to your face, like the technology is really good. I'm old. I'm an old man, so this is great to me. 
that I should not be having. I've seen TikTok filters before, by the way. Okay, <laughs> this isn't my first time. I'm just saying this one works really well, okay? It like looks like a real beard. We've seen a lot of bad TikTok overlays or whatever you call it. This one is good. I'm not that old, okay, damn it. Any You're old. Any sugar. Sorry, I was not paying attention, let's go back. My groceries and you can get yours. Um, no, actually I am the grocery monitor and you'll get the groceries I told you to get. Well, I have diabetes. <laughs> Why do I keep laughing at that part so much? <laughs> well, I have diabetes. Stop telling everybody about your diabetes all the time. God, using it as credentials all the time. Oh my God, this kid just busted his head wide open and he's bleeding everywhere. Somebody help. Don't worry, I have diabetes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you have diabetes, that's not funny at all. That is not hilarious. And my doctor said that I should not be having any sugar. Dude, everybody knows that your doctor's an idiot, okay? Dr. Frankson, I've been to him. He's a moron, okay? He told me I should stop smoking for my lung cancer, too. What a goober. Well, that sounds like a health plan for you. So, <laughs> yeah, why are you trying to make me conform to your diabetic meal plan, bro? I'm just a random lady in the store. What is this interaction? I was just over here talking to a bunch of bananas like I normally do, and you come over here and start giving me the business about diabetes. What is this? Can't a girl talk to a bunch of bananas in the fruit aisle without being harassed? I'm going to go ahead and get my bananas. Have a good day. This never happened. Stop. It wouldn't be over bananas. It would be over like Ben and Jerry's or something. There is nothing wrong with eating a banana. Yeah, you tell that to all those kids that died after they ate bananas that time. Not so funny now, is it? Okay. Too much of diet culture is wrapped up. <laughs> diet culture, man. Come on. Diet culture does not forbid bananas, okay? I am not sure which diet culture you're referring to, but I've never heard anybody disparage bananas in the name of weight loss. Oh, you want to lose weight? <laughs> Better not eat a banana. I've never heard that. That's weird. I've always heard, oh, you want to lose weight? <laughs> Don't eat any donuts, okay? Don't eat any Ben and Jerry's. That's the advice that I hear. And it's pretty good. That's pretty good advice. Don't eat foods that are going to give you a blood sugar spike. That's my advice. In what is good and bad, and food is neutral, including bananas. I'll take things that never happened for 500, Alex. And if it did happen, that person is a moron who knows nothing about diet. Why would somebody go around giving the advice that they got from their doctor for their diabetes to others? Now we're gonna take a look at a bonus clip that teaches us to come to terms with the word fat. I've been struggling a little bit with this myself lately, so I think this will be very helpful. She's gonna be responding to this comment that says, I know you are right, but I'm one of those people struggling with it after years and years of being taunted about my weight. I completely understand the sentiment. Um, it can be really hard, especially if you have grown up in a larger body, if you've been in a larger body for a long time. If you've been in a larger body for a long time. I just started renting out a larger body last week. Um, and especially if you have had family or friends who have been more than willing to point out the fact that you are in a larger body, it can be really hard to destigmatize the word fat. Well, if you keep saying larger body, we're not doing a good job of destigmatizing the word fat. We need to call ourselves fat. We live in fat bodies, not a larger body. We live in a fat body. Own the word, sister. What are we doing? The patriarchy has a firm grasp on you, madam. Um, and just kind of take that neutrality on. So I completely understand this. A great exercise that really helped me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Exercise. <laughs> That's fat phobic. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You can't take me anywhere. Stop pausing the video and making stupid comments, you idiot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm bad with that. Um, on my journey to, you know, take the word fat back. Take it back from who? Um, and find its neutrality. And I can't remember where I first read it. So if anyone remembers, please put it in the comments. Um, but did you first read it from fearing the black body? That book taught me a lot about myself and my journey into manhood. Uh <laughs> I literally don't think that I could make it through five pages of fearing the black body. We might do that as a challenge video one of these days, like seeing how long I can read fearing the black body. Have you ever seen like on other channels, they're like, 
watching Mr. Beast videos until I pass out or whatever, like something like that. I've got an idea for a new challenge video. Reading Fearing the Black Body until I have an aneurysm. We'll see how long I can hang in there. I think I can go at least three pages. Um, I don't know. Let me know if you would like to see that challenge video below. A great uh, tool is looking in the mirror um, or recording yourself um, and just saying the word fat over and over and over again. And okay. Fat. 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 Okay. All right, all right. And at first, it's going to feel kind of hurtful. It did feel a little hurtful at first. Um, and it's it's not going to be good. And it could... <laughs> it's not going to be good. Be very emotional. Um, but if you just say it over and over again, it's just going to start becoming like a weird sound. In so you want us to stare in the mirror and say the word fat repeatedly until it just becomes like a weird sound to us. Like you don't... It's just fat, fat, fat. It has no meaning anymore. Why are we doing this? I don't know. It seems that we do a lot of mental work in order to avoid physical work. If I'm being real with you, mental work is harder than physical work. It really is at the end of the day. Like once you get moving, you can just turn your stupid brain off and do physical work. In doing so, work is a kind of meditation in itself. And if you never do that, you're lacking mentally. You know what I mean? When you're like working hard, you're like digging a ditch or raking some leaves or something like, your brain just turns off and you're just doing work and you're getting exercise at the same time. The mental aspect of that is just as good for you as the physical. It's a form of meditation. If you never engage in that and you instead engage in mental gymnastics to try to make yourself feel better, I feel like that's detrimental. You've given up on trying to change yourself, so now you're trying to change your perception of yourself your head <laughs> um, and eventually by doing that it just kind of makes it a sound it doesn't much anymore all the effort that we're putting into changing our perception of ourselves could be put into changing ourselves it's damn near just as much work if you want we can do it right now together um you can just look at me i'll pretend to be looking at you <laughs> um okay. and we'll just say it because we're taking the power back. There's no power to the word. It's We're taking the power back by calling each other this word that hurts us. Okay? That's dumb. And that's dumb for other words, too. It's just a word. So, let's try it out. Ready? Okay. Fat, 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 fat. Fat, 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 fat. It is losing all of its power over me the more that I say it. You're right. I can feel the invisible chains breaking. I can feel the spell that this word has cast over me being broken. I don't think the saying a word repeatedly takes the power away. All you have to do is not value the opinion of the person calling you fat. If you try to take the piss out of me and I don't give a damn about your opinion, I don't care. This word has no power over me. No, I just don't care what you think. That's how you shield yourself from the criticism of others. You get to a point where you're so damn confident that you don't give a damn what any of these morons think. Oh no, Jeff thinks I'm an idiot, but I hate Jeff. I have no respect for Jeff, so his opinion is dog shit to me. That's the level that you need to get to. Fat, 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 you won't be able to find neutrality overnight. And it's definitely gonna be a journey. And That's a very bizarre stance to take. Instead of saying, I don't care what those morons think, you're saying the word fat that they are calling me isn't even bad. Okay, that's really weird. So if somebody calls you an idiot in order to cope, do you just redefine the word idiot? You're like, actually the word idiot means a very smart person. So they were calling me a very smart person. Like that's a whole lot of copium. Hitting that copium pipe extra hard. I'm not saying you should feel bad about people calling you fat. I'm just saying you shouldn't value their opinion. Don't try to rewrite words, bro. <laughs> what the hell? Are we going to rewrite the whole dictionary and change every bad word into a good one to spare our feelings? The irony of all of these movements is that it's far easier to just change yourself. There are still days that I struggle um, with, you know, being fat positive and, and feeling good about myself. Well, I feel good about myself when I do hard work and I see the results of my hard work. Um, obviously, there's going to be days that are easier than others, um, but I'm really proud of you for taking those steps 
Um, I'm really proud of you for the journey that you've gone on. What? They said, I know you're right, but I'm one of those people struggling with it after years and years of being taunted about my weight. Um, and we're proud of them? Okay. I'm not trying to be discouraging, but why is everybody proud of everybody all the time? And I'm here for you. I'm here for everyone who might be struggling uh, similar to Ruby here. So um, hang in there. You're doing great. You're putting the work in. Um, yeah. Instead of rewriting the dictionary and trying to change the meaning of words, I would say that we should just work on our own health. Rewiring your brain is more difficult than lifting a weight. You could be putting that effort into eating different types of food long enough that your brain rewires itself and no longer craves bad foods. A different sort of brain rewiring, if you will. A lot of people are struggling to lose weight because the human body craves rich foods. If you go on a low-fat diet, you are far more likely to go off the rails with sugar or something because you're craving that richness. Getting enough fat and protein in you will give you that richness that you crave and you will be less likely to seek out sweet treats. Happy Monday, everybody. Buddy, please click the like button. One like equals one mustache combing. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. None.